Hello. Y'all ready for the next talk? Woo! All right. So our next speaker, uh, probably familiar to many of you, is uh, Ned Batchelder. Uh, you probably know him from his multitude of other awesome PyCon talks. Uh, he's the driving force behind the Boston Python Meetup group. Uh, he is a huge presence on IRC. He's going to make faces at me as I go down all the awesome stuff he's done. Uh, he wrote coverage.py, and he's now responsible for teaching billions of people awesome stuff at Open edX. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to try to break with trad tradition of a few of my previous PyCon talks and most of our keynoters and not swear on stage. That's going to be my goal. We're going to see if I can do it. So I'm here to talk to you about facts and myths about names and values in Python. Um, first, a quick word about Open edX that Ned helpfully mentioned. Our session chair is also named Ned, confusingly. Um, open edX is educating the world. It is all open source. Uh, you can find out more at open.edx.org, and we're having an open space today, 345 in room 510B. But on to Python names and values. So Python is a very simple language. Um, when you come to it, it often works just as you'd expect if you've worked in other languages. So it works like those other languages do until it doesn't. So there are surprises that will get you if you come to Python with sort of an intuitive understanding of what might happen. Underlying mechanisms are very, very simple, but the effects can be surprising. And I know personally, I used Python for about 10 years without being able to describe some of the things I'm going to describe to you now. Um, so it can, you can get along for quite a long while without understanding precisely what's going on. But what I'm hoping to give to you today is an understanding of some fundamental mechanisms that will help you reason about your code and understand or hopefully even prevent some of those surprises. And the things we're going to be talking about are names and values and assignment and mutability. And as we go through this talk, the facts in the headers of these slides are 100% facts, simple statements about how Python works. And the very first one is extremely simple. Names refer to values. So the way variables work in Python is that they are a name that refers to a value. That sounds like any other language. And assignment simply makes the name refer to that value. So for instance, when we execute x equals 23, 23 is an integer object, which is drawn in this diagram with a, a circle around the 23. That tag-shaped symbol with the x in it is the name. And it's, also, it's like a tag hanging off the x, but it's also kind of like an arrow. Um, and it points to the 23. So the x refers to the 23. And then the next time in your program when you use the name x, Python goes and finds the value it refers to, and it uses that value. So when you say print x, it prints a 23. Very simple, right? I'm not, I hope there's no one in the room who is baffled by this, right? I'm starting very simple. Let's just get the facts laid out in a line. Now, many names can refer to one value. So once we've assigned x equals 23, we can also say y equals x. Now note that when we say y equals x, y is not referring to x. Y is referring to the value that x refers to. So y and x are both names for the 23. Neither one of them is the real name. They are both equally valid names for the 23. And of course, you can have many, many more names. Any value can be referred to by as many names as would like to refer to it. Names are reassigned independently. So if we have x equals 23 and we say y equals x, when we say y equals 12, x equals 12, rather, it makes x refer to 12, but y is still 23, right? If you had looked at these three lines of code, anyone in the room, if we'd put a print y, I should have put a print y there, we'd know that y is still 23, right? Making x be 12 doesn't somehow make y also be 12, right? And I know this seems very simple, but you're, there are going to be a point later in this talk where this fact is going to be very important, and you're going to remember this fact, and it's going to explain a thing that surprises lots of people. In Python, memory is managed dynamically, which means that values exist until there are no more references to them. So if we have x referring to the string hello, when we make x refer to the string world, the hello value now has no names referring to it. And so it is going to be reclaimed, and it is removed from the process. And exactly how that happens and when that happens doesn't matter. The important thing to a Python programmer is that as long as names are still referring to values, the values are still there. And once all the names are gone, the value is completely inaccessible. Now here's the fact that many people don't know about Python and starts to bring in the surprises. Assignment never copies data. And there's no asterisk on this slide. It's really true. It never copies data. If you're thinking now, and I've given this talk, I've rehearsed this talk a number of times, 
And there is always a person who, when I chat with them beforehand, I think, this person knows every, all of this stuff. They're not going to get anything out of this. I can entertain them with some of my clowny jokes, but they know all this stuff. And then afterwards, they come up to me and they say, yeah, you, you know, there's that one case where it isn't quite true. And no, it is always true. It, it never copies data. So here's nums referring to a list one, two, three. When we make, say, other equals nums, we didn't make a copy of the list. Now we, just as before, when we had x and y being both names referring to the same integer, now we have other and nums, which are two names referring to the same list. There is only one list. And as a result, when we get to that same state, other equal nums, and we look at the value nums, and we use a method on it, appending a four to it, where we've changed the list now to add a four to that list, and we print other, other is also one, two, three, four, because there's only ever been one list. So if we modify it with append, all the names that we're referring to that list are going to see that change. And this is where people get surprised, right? Lots of people will come and write a simple program, and they'll think, I want to keep that old list, so I'm going to give it a new name, and then I'm going to modify the new name, and the old name will still have the old data. But there's only been one list because assignment never copies data. So this is what's known as mutable aliasing, and it happens when you have a mutable value. So lists have methods on them that let you change the value in place. When we used dot append on the list, we didn't make a brand new list. We had one list object which changed its value. We had more than one name, the value is changed, and all the names see the change. Now in the three little lines that I've got here, four lines, it's very easy to see what's going on because the two names are right next to each other. But as we'll see later, it's very easy in a larger program to have the two or three or four names be widely spread apart and for the change to happen in one place and for the use of the data to happen in another. And so the surprise can be much more long distance than I can show on this slide. Now, there are also immutable values, immutable values. I'm from New York City, and people told me that you can't understand me when I say immutable values like that, so I'm going to try to slow it down. Immutable values are values that cannot be changed in place. Python types the numbers, ints and floats, and strings, and tuples. There are no methods on them that let you change their value. And if you think there are, you should go back and look again, because there aren't. So when we say x equals hello, x is referring to hello, y is referring to hello, now when we say x equals x plus there, what we're really doing is building an entirely new string, hello there, and then making x refer to it. And as a result, y still is hello, because there is no way to change the, the value in place, so we didn't have all the conditions necessary for mutable aliasing, so you don't get aliasing here. This is one of the reasons that people really like immutable values, and um, la languages that support them much more strongly than Python uh, have some real advantages over Python, but you can still make use of these values in Python. And if you understand where you're mutating values and where you're not, you can uh, build programs that are easier to reason about. Part of the problem with talking about this code is that I've been using the word change. But change really has a couple of meanings. So it's unclear what you mean, or you can get sloppy in your thinking about what you mean, and it can really help to drill in on exactly what you mean by change and use different words. So when we say we're changing an int, x equals x plus 1, as you know, ints are immutable. They cannot change. What we mean by x equals x plus 1 is that we are going to rebind the name x. So x refers to an int. Sometimes that's called it's bound to an int. We are going to rebind x. So we're going to take x plus 1, which is going to give us a brand new integer, and we're going to make x refer to that other new object. We're rebinding x. When we change the list by appending to it, we are actually mutating the list. So uh, this statement changes x. This statement changes nums. But this is rebinding x. This is mutating nums. They're very, very different, right? Uh, nums.append7 doesn't make you a new object, but x equals x plus 1 makes you a new int. So we'll use change informally when we talk about things, but when you have to reason about these things, it can help be helpful to actually use those specialized words. You can also rebind lists. So we can also say nums equals nums plus 7. Nums plus 7 gives us a brand new list, and then nums equals that rebinds that. Uh, there is no way to mutate an int because they are immutable. Now, some people will look at these problems and try to explain to you that, well, mutable objects and immutable objects are assigned differently, and that is not true. 
they're exactly the same for all values. It's changing that's different for them, and so you can get different effects. So the aliasing that you can get by the differences in how you change values can give you different behavior, and for some reason, people like to attribute that change in behavior to the assignment operator uh, statement, but it's not the assignment, it's the change. There are some other assignment variants. When we say x plus equals y, conceptually, that's the same as x equals x plus y. But what it actually is, is it calls a method on x called dunder i add, passing it y, which means that the type of x can decide what actually happens. Uh, as it happens, the way list works is that list implements dunder i add by using its own extend method to extend itself, mutating itself in place, and then returning itself, which means that when you say num list plus gets 4 comma 5, what you're really doing is you're extending it with 4 comma 5 and then doing a no-op assignment of itself onto itself. So you have to know what you're doing, right? This operation, num list plus equals, it's, it looks like an assignment operate, uh, a statement, which is a rebinding, and technically it is, but you're rebinding the name to the value it already had, so you're really just mutating something in place. So you really have to know what you're doing, and by the way, the Python docs don't mention this behavior at all, at least I can't find it, so that's a challenge to you. Find me where in the Python documentation it explains that lists do this. Now, references can be more than just names. So, for instance, list elements are references. I've been drawing the list, nums, as, as a, a row of boxes with numbers in them, but really, each of those boxes is itself a reference to a value, and the integers are floating around in uh, the matrix somewhere, being referred to by the, el by the list elements. And for example, the same things that you can do with names, you can do with list elements. So when we say x equals nums plus uh, sub one, that makes x refer to the same thing that the middle element of nums refers to. So now we've got num sub one refers to two, and x also refers to that too. And lots of different things are references. So object attributes and keys and values and dictionaries are references. Um, and list elements are references, and it all nests together very com in complicated ways. Anything that can appear on the left-hand side of an assignment statement is a reference, and all of the things that we're learning about how names behave, those references do the same thing. So you can have many references to objects, they don't refer to each other, um, reassigning one doesn't reassign the others, all those sorts of things. And by the way, lots of things are assignments. So the assignment statement is the obvious way to make a name have a new value. But in Python, lots of statements behave exactly like assignments. So this is the one we've been talking about, x equals some value. But when you do a for loop for x in something, that's actually assigning to x over and over again. And I'll show you some examples. When you define classes or functions, you are assigning to that name. This is the most important one, and we're going to cover this quite in quite some depth. All of the arguments in your functions are assignments to the local names in the function, and so on and so forth. Now, you don't get into many cases where import x is something you have to worry about how assignment works, but it is exactly the same. So let's talk about for loops a little bit. When you see a for loop like this, for x in sequence do something with x, what's really happening is X is assigned the first element in the sequence, and I'm waving my hands over the whole subscript of zero thing. The important thing is that a value comes out of the sequence and gets assigned to X, just as if it had, we had said X equals that value. And then we do the thing with X, and then we assign to X again, and then we do the thing with X, and that's how for loops work. And I don't mean it's kind of like assignment. Again, it really is an assignment to the name X. And whatever behavior you would have gotten by literally writing out all the assignment statements, that's what the behavior you're going to get from the for loop. To give you a concrete example, by the way, one of my previous talks um, was Loop Like a Native, which I did two years ago at PyCon, which you can look up. It goes into for loops and iteration in much more detail. Let's say we have a list of numbers, and I want to change that list to have all of the values be 10 times more than they had been. All right, so I'll make my list of numbers, one, two, three, and then I'll start iterating over my list for x and nums, so now x refers to the first element of nums, and then I'll compute x times 10, and I'll assign that to x. Now, you can see what just happened here, right? So what we had there was the first, that one, that integer one, was referred to by two separate names. It was referred to by num sub zero, and it was referred to by x. And when we, we reassigned x, that only modified one of the names, because remember, one of those things that you thought was so simple, you didn't have to pay attention to that early slide, reassigning one of the names doesn't reassign the other names. 
Now here we had two names referring to the integer, and we only reassigned one of them, and the one we actually cared about was left behind. Right? So if we go through this, we can see we're computing all these nice 10 times numbers, but nothing is changing the list, and at the end when we print nums, it's still 1, 2, 3. Right? So you might have written this code on your first day of Python, or maybe on your second week of Python, who knows when, and been confused by it, but now you understand enough to see all those really simple statements I made at the beginning pile up to explain exactly why this is happening. But let's talk about functions, because functions is where you're actually going to get into trouble. Okay? Some of you in the audience are thinking, yeah, there was that weird time that that list changed, and I didn't know why. I'm telling you why. It's because of function arguments. <laughs> so, num equals 17. When we call a function, functions have formal parameters in their definitions. So x here is a formal parameter, and they have actual arguments. Num in this function call is the actual argument. And what happens during a function call is that the actual arguments are assigned to the formal parameters. So these two statements together effectively do x equals num. And when I say effectively, I should really say it's actually an assignment to that name. x is assigned the value of num. And I've drawn here in a dotted line the stack frame which holds the local names of the function. So as you know, when you call a function, you get a bunch of local names that fall out of scope when the function returns. I'm drawing that as a dotted line around those names. So now we have num and x both referring to 17. When we print x, of course, we'll find 17. It will print. When we return from the function, the stack frame goes away, taking with it any names that were in that stack frame. And those names now are removing references from values, which may or may not go away, depending on if they were the only names referring to the values. And when we get back out of here, the only thing that's left is our num, which is still 17, exactly as you'd expect. Let's talk about a more complicated example. Let's say I want to write a function that's going to append a value twice to the end of my list. Right, so I get my usual nums one, two, three, I'm going to call append twice, right? So the formal parameter a list of nums twice is going to get assigned the value from nums. So now we have two names referring to the list, and we're passing in seven as the value. When we append to a list, we're going to add a seven to the end of the list. We're going to add a seven to the end of the list again. When we return, the frame is gone, the names are going away. When we come back out, nums has been modified, one, two, three, seven, seven, right? So our, our function works great. We've appended to the list twice. Right, and you can see why it works and why the list, the list didn't get copied in and then get copied out. It was just a reference that was used from the function to the caller. Let's write it again, a bad way. So here's a list of numbers. We're going to call append twice bad exactly the same way. And then in here, we're going to use a list plus val val. It's going to make us a new list, one, two, three, seven, seven. We're going to assign that to a list. And then we're going to return. The frame goes away. The names go away any of the values that only had one reference go away, and we come back out, and we've done a lot of work for nothing, right? So we did all that work in there, the local name went away, um, and we've accomplished nothing. Yay us. <laughs> so how can we fix that? So here we can call append twice good. We do the same thing, we make a new list for a list, but now we're going to return the value, right? So we've made a new value inside the function the return statement is going to give us sort of a little reference there on the frame so it can hold on to that value that's coming back. We assign the return value to nums so that we can get that new list. And now when we print nums, we have what we want. Right? So we've made three stabs at writing this very simple function to append to a list. Right? And here they are. So the first one mutates its argument. This is a mutating version of append twice. The list you pass in is mutated in place. Uh, this one is useless. Don't worry about that. This one makes a whole new list and returns it. The best advice I can give you from all this is the best way to avoid the surprise of mutable aliasing is don't mutate values. Write functions like this that make new lists. And as Ned mentioned, I hang out in the Python IRC channel, and there's a lot of times that people come in with questions like this, and the advice is always just make a new list, make a new list, just make a new list. Um, it will make your code a lot easier to reason about. Now, a few more facts about names and values just to cover everything. Uh, Python is dynamically typed, at least until whatever we hear about from you know, tomorrow afternoon. We're all afraid about that. Um, but any name can refer to any value at any time, right? Names have no types associated with them. So x can be 12, and then it can be a string, and then it can be a list, and then we can actually, the list doesn't even have to be homogenous. It can be an int and a string and an int. And it wasn't until 
I actually was preparing this talk that I realized there's this very interesting di uh, duality that names have a scope. They come and go with functions, but they have no type. And values have a type, right? The int is always an int, but they have no scope. So you've got all these values that in C terms live on the heap, and all these names that come and go in your stack frame. Other languages' names will have both scope and type, but, but Python sort of splits it cleanly in two. And keeping this in mind that values that are created way above you in the call stack can be used by functions down below and vice versa can help you understand how data is flowing through your program and help you write programs that won't have big surprises. So here's some other topics that wouldn't have fit. Um, in, in all honesty, this entire talk was spite-driven development by seeing people say that Python has no variables. And I'm hoping that most of you are baffled by this statement, which means that you haven't heard it, which means that it's falling out of favor. Um, when people have said this, what they mean is that the variables don't work like they do in C. And this is a silly way to explain Python for a number of reasons, and I would be glad to rant about it over a beer with any one of you. Um, another, another question that comes up from people coming from other languages, is Python called by value or is it called by reference? And the answer is, uh, there's a couple of answers. One is neither, one is kind of both, one is, you know, why are you worried about it? Um, <laughs> Um, some people explain it by saying that, uh, that Python is uh, called by value, but all the values are references, which I think is just making matters worse. Uh, I like to say it's called by assignment, really, because that's what it is, right? When you call the function, what you're doing is assigning to that name. And if you understand assignment, then you understand how the call works. Um, if you saw Amy's talk earlier, she did uh, the, the tic-tac-toe example much better than, than this. Um, but making a 2D list is complicated, and people will often get it wrong at first, and it has to do again with sharing values rather than making new values. And lastly, if you're having questions about how your code works, there's an awesome site called Python Tutor, where you can literally type in your own Python code and step through it, and it will make drawings like the ones I've got in this talk. They're not as pretty, but they're working on your code. Um, they happen automatically, whereas the ones in this talk, I, are, there are untold man hours that went into them. Um, that's what I've got. I'm happy to take your questions. Um, this is an awesome comic. For those of you who don't have a question, the, the, there's one loop that goes 0 through 9 through that linked list, and the other goes through the digits in an other determined but mysterious order, and you'll be interested to figure out what it is. And don't forget about the Open Addicts open space. Yeah, awesome. So Thank you. If we have questions for Ned, go ahead and uh, line questions? up at that microphone right there in the center. Ask me a question. Hello. Hello. Um, really wonderful talk. Thank you. I had a, just a quick question just to sort of make sure I understood correctly. If you have a list and you assign a member of that list to a variable, and then later on you modify that member of the list independently, if you do print, you print out the variable, you'll actually get the modified version, not the old value. You'll have the old one because the old you, one. right. It's the same situation of having two names referring to a value, and you've changed one of the names. It doesn't change the other name. Uh, okay. There's there's no way in Python to have a name refer to another name. You can only have names referring to values. That's the other thing I should have put on the um, this slide, which is uh, this slide, which is the arrows all have to go from the left side to the right side. There's no arrows in and among the left side. Is Any other else? questions? Did I nail it? Really? You nailed it. I nailed it. Stuck I the landing. Could've, I could have slowed down and used the five minutes for more slides. 10.0. Russian judge loved it. Right, it wait. Great. Got oh. some here. So with those uh, dotted, dotted lines around the boxes there, uh, you show the values that are in the function definition going out of scope as soon as the function definition or the function exits. Yeah. Um, what happens when there's the, I'm sure everybody's experienced the pitfall of a mutable uh, default value for a keyword arg. Yeah, so if you, d default values are held on to by the function itself. So if you, get, if you use a list as a default value for a function argument, that is a value that is referred to by the function object itself. And so it will stick around forever, and it will be used for every function call that gets made, and therefore it will grow indefinitely and surprise you. Thank you. <laughs> sure. 
All right. Thank Sorry. you. Enjoy the rest of the talks. Thank you, Ned. Thank you, everyone.